Hey guys, Epic Epics here, coming at you guys with the weekly replay analysis. Sorry about last week, it was final season and we missed out on last week's replay analysis. This week, we're bringing you guys an in-house game. They had the first pick and the first spend, so we'll start off from there. They bend out the Lone Druid because I've been practicing Lone Druid and they didn't really want to deal with that split push off lane bear. Uh, they went ahead with um, banning the Bat Rider second. We banned out the Furion to deter them from any sort of cheeky split push capability and uh, any sort of enhancement to their laning and ganking. And also we banned out the NA, the NYX Assassin. So why we did that was because we wanted to let through a few of the good heroes and maybe pick up two of them uh, after they picked their, their their first pick so they went ahead with the dark seer very versatile strong solo offlaner or perhaps a jungler just a very strong uh, he could also solo the safe lane so it's it's just very versatile and then we went ahead with the keeper of the light our second pick during this pick phase we had the option of picking up the magnus right away which would have been strong but we thought you know we could pick the rubik that way that kind of deters them from taking the Magnus because stealing the RP is very strong and if we picked up the Magnus then they would have definitely picked up the Rubik so went ahead with the Rubik worked out in our favor where they picked up the Shadow Demon a strong counter to their Darkseer and the Life Stealer so our third pick was Magnus now just very quickly you can already see what their lanes are gonna be you know it's very rare for the life stealer to be in a dual lane especially with a shadow demon so it's very likely that they're thinking of shadow demon life stealer in and some other support in a tri lane with the dark seer perhaps in a solo lane the safe lane or the off lane depending on where their tri lane will be so at this point where as in our side we're very flexible uh, magnus could be off lane mid lane rubik kato could be supporting any sort of you know they could even do dual lanes and uh you know it's it's still very versatile so what we wanted to do at this point was ban out any sort of semi carry mid hero that way they're forced to go with a life stealer solo core and with a you know a single core life stealer it's very easy to kind of work against him and counter him um so we went ahead banned out the queen of pain we banned out the lena because of its strong you know synergy with the shadow demon and we banned out the ta uh, also very strong mid with the life stealer they went ahead and bend out a few of the really strong carries that work with our lineup that will destroy the life stealer Cotto PL obvious reasons uh, Luna for farming pushing capability and the gyrocopter because call down slow works against uh, even when life stealer is raged and that creates a huge space for the uh, supports to kite the life stealer whereas gyro can also stay out of harm's way and use a flask cannon to you know get shots on top of the life stealer um, so their fourth pick was then the Lashrak, a pseudo Lina that works great with the Shadow Demon. Um, you know, it's not a much burst damage, but it gives them pushing potential and it gives them, you know, that very stable stun that works with the Shadow Demon's Disrupt. And at this point, we thought, let's pick our first, you know, we, we see their tri lane, so what we need is a strong, versatile hero that will be able to go tri lane versus tri lane. Um, and that was what Weaver uh, that that came to our minds because the Weaver's ability to Sakuchi out of an open wound, and you know even if you got disrupted then stunned then wounded, you could still Sakuchi out relatively safely. And with your attack range and your Gemini attack that allows for two pot shots, uh, you're able to every six second harass the Life Stealer for a de decent chunk of damage. Whereas, you know, the Life Stealer, Shadow Demon, and the Shrak would be kind of the Shadow Demon and the Shrak would be kind of zoned out by the Keeper of Lights Illuminate. So at this point we thought Weaver would give us a pretty strong tri lane, so we went ahead with that. Puck here was a very cool and very uh, good pick. We were thinking of banning the Puck over maybe perhaps the Lena, but we thought, hey, uh, you know, Lena Shadow Demon's burst is probably more hurtful towards what we're thinking about with the Weaver, so we ban out the <coughs> Lena. But the Puck is basically very popular right now is in the meta scene where uh, the Life Stealer would infest inside the Puck, and with the Puck blinking in with an Invest Bomb, you're doing a ton of AoE damage. And the Dream Coil is keeping everyone around the Life Stealer, so it's very hard for anybody to kite the Life Stealer. And within six seconds, you know, he can wreak havoc. 
Our last pick was the Anti Mage because with the Puck pick, we could see that the uh, the Dark Seer would be soloing a a lane, and we wanted to put up Tri Lane against Tri Lane, Anti Mage against Dark Seer, and you know even if the Dark Seer went really aggressive, what went to crop creeps, it's still very easy for the Anti Mage to trade farm, and to trade to just you know you don't need to secure free farm for the anti mage in our lineup simply because we are two a dual core and you know as long as the anti mage is getting farmed then it's good enough and if you guys actually want to see a dark seer anti mage uh, matchup you could check out how to be aggressive with dark seer in my dota 2 advanced guys but anyways kai uh why don't you just add in a few of the things <coughs> that i missed out i know you did the pick and bans yourself so there might have been some thought process that i didn't cover right so um <coughs> Going through their first three picks, they picked up uh, the Dark Seer, the Nex, and the Shadow Demon. That kind of giveaways their lane. I mean, they could run the Dark Seer mid, but this is an in-house, and we kind of know these guys. And it was it's also uh, relatively unconventional to say the least. And we also know they wouldn't be doing it. So, um, with that in mind, banned out some strong mids that um, would be like key to a dual core lineup if they were to run one and also give our mag an easier time mid so um, after having that done um, we looked at uh, the Lena as a key band anytime there's a shadow demon just because the roaming potential with the high burst from Lena is pretty strong in any lineup and then that plus I was thinking of picking up a weaver for um, an aggressive tri lane because and like even though we like picked the weaver fourth they'll be assuming the weaver is going solo long lane so they wouldn't be expecting a fifth which was like our primary carry as the anti mage and like with their picks um i was able to kind of predict their lanes like they could have gone aggressive but that was just like something we kind of like gambled on i guess and um it worked out pretty well because weaver Weaver with a coupled with a coddle has like endless harass potential on the enemy supports in a tri lane versus tri lane. Plus, the Kuchi is a good skill for surviving from the nakes, so it was kind of a good lane for us. And as long as we did, like, as long as we broke even on the other lanes, we were in a pretty good position. Yeah, and I just want to add something. I think it's probably better for the Darkseer to be in uh, offlane, simply because he can pull the cre enemy creep wave into the jungle, and he would be farming the creep wave as well as the jungle wave, and that kind of you know gives a huge boost to his farm and experience, and that's something you cannot do in the safe lane. Well, you can you technically you can do, but it's not as effective and the creep equilibrium just naturally kind of screws you over um, and you know if you look at the lineup if you just look at the lineup it's not really a strong out pick per se uh, especially with our lineup it's kind of ragtag am weaver it's kind of weird but you guys will see as the game progressed how that actually worked out and sometimes you know being creative pays off here we'll give you guys a quick look into the laning phase top as you guys see it's tri lane versus tri lane with the weaver you know i'm able to put myself in very precarious positions uh they were gonna kind of bully us out of the lane with that open wound and stuff but it's not gonna work against the weaver and here you see you know denying some farm getting a bunch of pot shots off wasting that region on top of the Lashrak. Mid is gonna be puck versus the magnus and here it's gonna be a relatively you know advantageous lane for the puck simply because he's able to phase shift away from his nukes and you know the magnus being a melee hero and uh, being the puck having the long attack range would be able to harass the magnus for a lot and here uh, you know the dark seer versus the anti mage relatively even uh, the dark seer could opt to you know creep cut once he gets his soul ring and uh, whereas he will be able to pull the creep wave into the neutral farm both of those at the same time but that may not happen right away and I was staying on this because I wanted to show you guys even though they got the split earth, the earth right after there's no cast animation on the Sakuchi so I could just spam the Sakuchi skill and still go invisible and with, unless they had a sentry which they didn't put down right away uh, they would be they would be unable to dish out any additional damage onto the weaver 
any other carry, any other carry would be able to, would actually be unable to last hit or be in a position where they'll be of use to harass the life stealer away simply because of the killing potential of Shadow Demon, Lashrak, and the life stealer. And here you see they no longer go on the Weaver, instead they're going on our Rubik. But it doesn't work out too badly for us. Uh, as, as they take away our Rubik, the Weaver's chasing ability really comes into play. You know, the Life Sealer gets picked off right away. And then here you see, you know, a second kill picked up. So it's two for one. Although I get two assists and not much gold from that situation, uh, we still pick up a huge advantage in terms of experience and in terms of lane just control in general. Uh, Kai, what do you think of this lineup <coughs> right now? In laning phase, is there something you know that you want to add? Yeah, like as you can see, we were um, fortunate enough to predict their lanes, and um, it was working out like much as I uh, expected, I guess, for us because they don't really have a go on our Weaver um, <coughs> unless they like land everything perfectly with uh, sentries and everything and like our supports are able to kind of counter initiate with the rubik lift as well as uh caudal blast is able to deter the enemy from uh trying anything too aggressive since at low levels their supports are also very squishy so they're susceptible to the high damage output from our caudal weaver and i just want to you know show you guys here as the anti-mage it's very crucial for him to farm up his tranquil boots but earlier i showed you guys he opted to courier over a salve you know instead of being cheap and get his tranquil and with the salve it kind of puts him back on even grounds with the dark seer as you saw the dark seer with the shell actually deals a freaking ton of damage and just putting it on his creep wave really deters the anti mage to go for his last hits where you know if if he were to creep cut then the anti mage would kite around ring around the rosie on this t1 tower and still be able to see us very effectively where here you know although he he does have 20 and uh he, he's very you know in in a lot of times in very precarious positions Here's another goal that you guys see in the tri-lane versus tri-lane into a disrupt right after a split earth and them dropping uh, sentry ward onto us kind of deterring us from going back in but the weaver having the high mobility of a level 2 Sakuchi uh, is, is unable to get picked off and you know we're able to harass away the uh, supports despite them picking off one of our supports the life stealer is still unable to farm with only 60s right now and that later adds up to be a huge problem although i'm foregoing a lot of my cs as well just for you know kind of zoning out the supports and trading kind of trading kill for kills but it, it works out very good for us because we unlike them have a dual core and here as you see our anti-mage farming up really benefits the team and if we go into the, um, the last hit and the nice anti-mage is leading and if we go into the net worth anti-mage is leading here I want to show you guys another engagement in this tri-lane versus tri-lane if we attack. look at the hero levels Must you know uh, the myself? we are actually pretty much dead even with us losing out a little bit them gaining more from the uh, from the creep kills Magnus TP's in in this fight and we see how completely dominant this it gets turned around the life sealer gets chased down Weaver you know with the su stupid Sakushi easily able to chase down and it becomes a 3 and 0 for us so this is one of the breaking points of the game where this you know we were dead even before the fight and right afterwards you see that you know we're ahead in terms of experience with weaver and Kado ahead of the life stealer and the rubik ahead of the shadow demon and lashrak so kai you know these kind of these kind of situations what do you think the other team could have done here to kind of prevent us from snowballing uh well i think like there might have been like a slight misplay or miscommunication on there and like as you can see the nakes instantly wounded um, the Rubik and it wasn't even a second into the wound that the uh, um, Shadow Demon disrupted the mm -hmm. Rubik maybe in hopes of setting up for the 
the Shrek's not. No Shrek, but mm. like. But with the open wound, it would have been a great DPS time yeah, for them to just, you know, exactly. go ahead with the right click. And that resulted in the Magnus having the time to actually TP in here and getting that two man RP off. Which, yeah. you know, turned turned out greatly for us. And and actually here we see you getting picked off. Let me go back in the replay time a little bit and see what's going on. So you got your ring of health, you're tranquil, you're reaching in quite a bit, and you thought you might go aggressive on the dark seer, I, I presume. I think I just got greedy right. on and the one on one because I was already ahead. And then by here a lot. the puck comes down, and the one on one you actually get picked off just the one on one. Yeah. Yeah. Like I you, knew I was like double yeah. in CS, Ooh. so it was just like slow. Ah, I see. I see what happened here. You popped your wand in hopes of actually killing him, and and you got There's killed. The double shell. Yeah. And there's just some trolling in the in the in the chat log, but uh, you know we're all friends. It's all good natured. Sorry for the homophobic comments. It's uh, it's just for fun. It's not meant to hurt anybody. In case you know um, some of my viewers get offended. Anyways, let's move on to the next fight. Here you guys will see a pickoff happening. Uh, right away when the uh, the li the Lashrak gets lifted up, uh, you know he gets kind of he's out of position. And uh, here you see with the with the what is it called the carry and swarm giving vision, he's unable to juke our two ranged attackers, and life stealer as well gets picked off. So that's Lashrak, Shadow Demon, and the life stealer once again. So. Having the Magnus come gank, having one the, you know, that opening that we were looking for, you're able to really snowball very hard in a tri lane versus tri lane situation. And it becomes an almost unsalvageable situation for them simply because the life sealer did not get any farm ATN2. And I am able to almost double his farm. And if we look at the anti mage, more than doubling his farm. So, Kai. You know, at this point, we kind of already see how the game is going to progress. You know, if if there were a takeaway with this game, what would it be for our viewers and also for ourselves when we're playing? If we were in the losing side, if we were in the receiving side of this this kind of pressure, uh, what would be the ideal choice to make? What would be some of the different things that we could do to kind of turn it around? I think you got to in some cases cut corners where you can and then also but also Radiance play safe like they're already attack. getting pressure at top as you can see their top tower is almost dead um the magnus came top and ganked them obviously they're playing from that behind in terms of their tri lane right? but it's 10 minutes in you see they have no vision on the map like any vision at all around their tri lane and like to secure the next the farm would be ideal yep. disrupt into you know a rage and uh, last hit on the tower to deny the tower, but as you guys see, these kind of these kind of small plays, although they do make up for what they have uh, for what they were doing, it's still not really enough to kind of put them back in the game because their shadow demon did indeed get picked off, and life stealer coming back in gets picked off, and I myself kind of just you know knowing that I would die. Going for the trading kills, getting a double kill along with a, you know a life stealer and a Lashrak kill along with the shadow de demon kill from earlier. So although they denied the tower and they killed me, that was three kills on myself. And well, here you see that they actually pick off the Rubik as well. But all the meantime, anti mage is kind of free farming. So I don't know. In my opinion, Kai, I was thinking maybe they needed to rotate out of the lane. Like instead, they would. You know, put immense pressure on you. They just leave this tower because we don't have a strong pushing lineup early game. Weaver, Rubik, Cotto, it's not very we don't really have any pushing tower put towards the buildings. I mean we do have creep clearing creep wave clearing power with the Cotto and Rubik, but that's not as strong as say a Lashrax uh, edict right. on top of a building. So I think maybe just put more pressure on you and you know have the Darkseer also rotate out of the lane. As you see he's actually very you know I, I think possibly even leading and farm. Uh, well not in terms of net worth but 40 CS that's that's quite a bit. That's actually more CS than me. Uh, similar CS to me and he should be rotating out with his iron shell and level 4 vacuum you know that yeah. would have great impact in the game 
and we see some miscommunication here uh, in terms of them coming into the waning rift actually taking it off off missing the mag missing his uh his shockwave but it's all right weaver yeah, comes in clean up duty <clears throat> i was gonna point out that i think the darkseer should have been more involved there's a lot of skirmishes top Mm -hmm. Where he could have just TP'd yeah. in and had he TP'd in, I think it would have made a big difference. The surge would have been huge because yeah. it gives you the move speed to keep up with the Weaver or to escape yeah. from the Weaver. Yeah. I, it would definitely have the have the supports give the supports enough time to actually escape the Weaver because the only reason Weaver has such strong chasing capability is because of his movement speed. It's not that he has any sort of slow or uh, you know any sort of disable to keep the enemy from leaving say for example a chaser like you know uh lone druid where his bear once he entangles you can't surge away you can't do anything but uh with the weaver as long as you can keep up with his movement speed he's unable to chase exactly here a little bit of skirmish coming in three of these heroes caught all totally out of position uh gets picked off and uh, us two kind of backing off. This is what we were talking about earlier. It should have done earlier. They should have done this earlier. As the anti mage is already almost finished his battle fury at, uh, by this point of the game. Actually, no. Actually, you're still pretty far from it. You still have uh, a good 2,000 gold to go. Um, but you know, they should have done this maybe. 10 minutes earlier, as soon as the tri-lane started dying, tri-lane versus tri-lane, they should have rotated and put the pressure. Uh, but here, also, I think some of the things we could talk about is positioning, as a lot of times, like, we, we kind of get overconfident because this is not our actual team, and I get picked off right away, and I had to buy back for this coming fight. Yeah. I feel like, positioning-wise, a lot of the times, we were very kind of we're kind of weak like you you got picked off a few times I got picked off a few times it was you know nowhere near the kind of games that we were playing we're used to playing in our team match makes and in our uh, amateur tournaments so I, I feel like um, you know a big a big part of like really clutch plays like a clutch time lapse out or like a cool Sakuchi to dodge a projectile stun are very good but fundamentally you know it's a it's a team game and what the, the most important thing I think in Dota 2 is positioning and that includes a lane position against maybe perhaps enemy heroes or even just positioning in terms of map so anti-mage is getting farmed while they're pushing this so there was no reason for me to come up here and get picked off simply because if we have Caudal will defend this tower anyways and as long as we delay the anti-mage will continue to get free farm it worked out alright for us uh, with the buyback anti-mage got a double kill with that sick mana void killing two instantaneously there and we're chasing down the Lashrak and some of other uh, other heroes Puck, Life Slayer as you saw got picked off but um Kai, what do you think? You think uh, what I said kind of <coughs> makes sense about in terms of just playing passive, don't, you know, stay in a safe position, and if you have a farming split pushing hero like anti mage, just give him the space and he'll make things happen. Yeah, like you bring up a good point. Like, we have two carries, they only have one, right? If one of ours is pushed or is farming, then it's pretty much a win because we can hold them back with the coddle blast and kind of keep them at bay. Also, that fight bottom, um, as you can see, I when I died I walked top and then their next TP mid which means that he didn't have a TP for bottom and there was no way of him getting there because they don't have a tier one so when we took that fight it was without their carry and we had both of ours in the fight and it was uh, relatively one-sided as you can see they were fighting close to our tier one our TP supports came in and we just cleaned up since they blew the majority of their mana killing Weaver the first time after the buyback they pretty much had no mana I had yeah that and here again point. me going overly aggressive on the puck you know he's able to kite me here I didn't magic wand I was thinking you know move to the side toggle this magic wand oh it was just bad <laughs> it was just a bad play in my part but anyways yeah this kind of shows what's going on like the anti-mage is getting free farm, we shouldn't be taking fights right in front of their T2. But regardless, thanks to our dual core kind of strategy, 
uh, you'll see how it pans out as the game continues. This is the last team fight that you guys will see. Basically, you know, again, I'm kind of trying for those clutch plays. I fog them, get the get the time lapse off, and then this creates opportunity for the Magnus to go for the huge RP, picking off the Shadow Demon, really hurting the puck, and puck gets picked off here. Life Stealer gets picked off by an anti mage one on one at bottom. I'll go back to that in a moment. We're able to chase every everything down. So that was basically a team white. Uh, here I'll show you guys what happened away from this. So the life stealer is here. He just raged and anti mage takes this opportunity to go ahead. Few pot shots off while he's TPing and a mana void taking off that free kill. So it was a 4 on 4 mid. Without their single core, they were too weak and unable to do anything. And as we'll see, they call the GG momentarily. So Kai, I think this game was pretty much it had a lot to do with our pick and bans, I believe. Uh, going for a single core, it kind of forces you to really pick up farm on your single carry. And if, if in terms of net worth, you know, he was not matching us, you know, he was not matching us, let alone like superseding us. So I feel like if you were to build a single core, you really need to place a lot of emphasis on your single core carry. Uh, you know, what I mean is maybe if a tri lane is not enough, your mid puck needs to start to gank and put more pressure on the top lane before you're even level 6, before, you know, maybe as soon as you go ahead and grab a rune at the top rune, if you got lucky, or if you just grabbed a rune, or if you just bottle curled, go ahead, rotate top, shoot some of your, your illusionary orbs our way, kind of harass us back, or even threaten to gank. That way we sort of have to back off and you know with the weaver yeah you can maybe be cheeky but with the sentry where you really can't be too cheeky so you gotta stay back and this gives the opportunity for the life stealer to last hit or in this case maybe even shut down the anti mage you know there's no supports there it's a dark seer versus an anti mage although he has a blink puck has the illusionary orb and a waning rift that really could ke potentially keep up with the anti mage and early game as long as you put pressure on the anti mage he's a hero that would just crumble you know what, what, do, you, what do you think Kai like <coughs> I, I think picking and banning although you know dual core versus single core it didn't really work out for them but I'm sure if we played versus DK or th something and it was burnings life stealer we would got decimated like he would have had armlet maelstrom face boots in like nine minutes and just three shot at me and you right so you know I think there's some things that uh, th that that could have possibly went better for them. Like, yeah, do like could, could you pinpoint some of them before we finish, wrap up this replay analysis for our viewers? Like, I think a single core is still like viable, although it might not be the most ideal lineup. Like, dual cores are seem to be like what's popular right now in the current meta. Um, well, in this case, you see their life stealer wasn't really involved in a lot of kills and he didn't really have any farm so either their team needs to make room for him or maybe he's like not rotating correctly but his farm was lacking he couldn't even keep up with the weaver the weaver who was fighting the entire game was able to still outlast hit the life stealer yeah like if you saw I had 21 out of 27 <coughs> in terms of kill participation higher than even the supports uh, was constantly getting and evolving myself just so that anti mage would in turn be able to kind of farm on the side and right. it shows in his last hits 199 compared to 100 so yeah I think that's it for this week's replay analysis um, there will be a new giveaway coming out soon and the giveaway winners announcement very soon today uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video there's also some other workout stuff in real life kind of workout videos that we're thinking of doing with Jack we're following a nutrition plan and a workout plan if you guys are interested in that keep an eye out as well thank guys f thank you guys for watching see you guys next week Peace.